Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mr. <laughs> this is Europe and Western Asia, and here is Cyprus. Now, let's take a look, shall we? Cyprus has been inhabited for a very long time, back when it still had pygmy elephants and hippos waddling about. This here is the earliest spot of human civilization in Cyprus, Hirokitia, where the people, who back then were quite diminutive, lived like hobbits in houses like this, and farmed, hunted deer, and herded pigs and goats. By the Bronze Age, we find Cyprus very much engaged in trade with the rest of the Mediterranean. One group of traders, the Mycenaean Greeks, so loved the island, they began settling there. Indeed, in Homer's Iliad, the Cypriot prince and master archer Teusa fought alongside the Greeks in the Trojan War. From the 10th century BC, the Phoenicians founded a colony at Citium. Then, about a century later, the island was subjugated by the Assyrians. The Cypriot kings won their freedom in 631 BC, only to be conquered by Egypt 60 years later. After the Persians conquered Egypt, Cyprus passed to them. And though there had been centuries of foreign rule, the Cypriots remained loyal to Greece, joining the Ionian Greeks in their revolt against Persian rule in 499 BC, which the Persians suppressed. Though mainland Greece managed to stave off Persian invasion, Cyprus remained under Persian control until 333 BC, when Alexander the Great put the Greeks back in charge, and the Cypriots sent help to Alexander in the tricky siege of Tyre. When Alexander died, his empire split in four, with the Egyptian corner ruled by the family of Ptolemy taking custody of Cyprus, ensuring Greek rule for nearly three centuries. Now one of the major schools of Western philosophical thought, Stoicism, was formulated by the Cypriot Zeno of Citium, and this continued into Roman times. The Roman resting control of the island in 58 BC. It was into Roman Cyprus that St. Paul, Barnabas, and Mark introduced Christianity. Barnabas was himself a Cypriot Jew. Now many Jews did not convert and very much resented Roman rule, slaughtering garrisons and committing genocide in several regions during the Kitos War, while the bulk of Rome's forces were engaged against the Parthians in the east. Once the Jews took control of Cyprus, according to Dio Cassius, they slaughtered 240,000 Cypriot Greeks. A Roman army was sent to the island, and they quickly stamped out the rebellion and enacted laws forbidding Jews to live on the island. After the fall of Western Rome, Cyprus continued under the jurisdiction of the Greek-speaking Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire, and there was peace, with the Church of Cyprus becoming independent of the Church of Antioch. By the 7th century, the Arabs were invading, and for 300 years, Cyprus was considered neutral ground, though periodic Arab invasions occurred, resulting in much death and destruction. This is all that remains of Salamis, which was never rebuilt after the Arabs destroyed it. The Byzantines finally stepped in to take control under Emperor Nikiforos Phokas. In 1184, the governor of Cyprus, Isaacius Komnenos, a very cruel man, declared the island independent from Byzantium. Now, in 1191, King Richard the Lionheart of England set out on the Third Crusade. His wife and sister had been shipwrecked on Cyprus, and Mr. Komnenos imprisoned them. Justly incensed, Richard conquered the island, keeping his promise not to put Komnenos in irons. No, he put him in chains of silver instead. <laughs> The island passed to the Knights Templar, who sold it to the French knight and former crusader king of Jerusalem, Guy de Lusignan. The French nobility ruled the island until 1489, when it was sold to the Venetians. The Ottoman Turks then began attacking the island, kidnapping Cypriots to be sold as slaves, and destroying Limassol in 1539. The Venetians began fortifying the cities. Here is the designs for the walls of Nicosia, in Greek, Lefkosia, which still stand to this day. However, they were not completed by the time the Turks invaded in 1570. The Turks butchered 20,000 Cypriots in Nicosia and made surviving women and children slaves. Thus, the Ottomans took Cyprus, which they really didn't bother to develop or invest in, with the notable exception of Abu Bakr Basha, though his gracious efforts were personally funded and not financed by the Ottoman government. Meanwhile, Turks were brought over to settle on the island, while the Greeks kept to their own communities. In 1821, news arrived that Greece was fighting for independence against the Ottomans, prompting several Cypriots to go there and join the struggle. Greece won its freedom, but Cyprus remained under the neglectful Ottoman rule that had seen the island descend into to severe poverty. Even the Turkish inhabitants of Cyprus revolted against the indolent governing. Ottoman power, however, was diminishing, and after Turkey was crushed by Russia in the Russo-Turkish War of 1878, Britain assumed control of Cyprus, taking over officially in 1914. The Greek Cypriots began calling louder than ever for Enosis, Union, Union with Greece, the land of their ancestors. But the Turkish population opposed this, and the British were unwilling. But the Orthodox Church in both Cyprus and Greece championed the cause. In 1950, a certain Makarios became Archbishop of Cyprus. 
Cyprus and began pushing for union more than ever, becoming very popular among the Greeks and very unpopular among the Turks, who themselves preferred the idea of partition on the island. In 1956, during the Cyprus emergency, where far-right Greek Cypriots began a violent attempt at overthrowing British rule, the Brits abducted Makarios and sent him here for a year. But after the London-Zurich agreements, Cyprus attained independence in 1960, with Makarios as first president. This ethnographic map indicates the demography of 1960 Cyprus, with the Greek population shown in blue and the Turks in red. As the years passed, unification with Greece seemed more and more difficult, and Makarios was unwilling to endorse violence to achieve it. Conflict between Greek and Turk intensified. In 1974, the military junta, then ruling Greece, along with the Cypriot National Guard, instigated a coup to remove Makarios and put a pro enosis president in his place. Five days later, Turkey invaded, ostensibly in order to protect the Turkish population. The result was that Turkey took the top part of the island. The Turks all moved up here and the Greeks down there. Cyprus was divided along the so-called Green Line in a partition that was illegal under the London-Zurich agreements that Turkey itself had signed. Turkish Northern Cyprus declared independence in 1983, but only one country in the world recognizes it, Turkey. As far as the international community is concerned, it's all one Cyprus. The division has been an ongoing dispute ever since, but nevertheless, Cyprus has seen immense improvements, reaching a very high ranking in the Human Development Index, and receiving over 3 million tourists annually to enjoy the scenic beaches and good food, and mountains and castles, and ancient temples that look as though time itself had taken a bite out of them. But what does tomorrow have in store for Cyprus? Comment below, but for now, bye bye <laughs>